And what we're seeing today, what we're seeing today in France with the election of Donald Trump, with I think the disaster that is much of Europe, what we're seeing today is the death, is the death, slow death, of the social democratic ideal. And what we're seeing rise in its stead is neo-communist parties on the left and neo-fascist parties on the right. What we're seeing is Antifa on the left and the alt-right and of its various forms and autocratic regimes on the right. But social democracy is dying. It's dying in the streets of Paris. It's dying in the streets. It's dying in the, in the bureaucracy of Brussels. It's dying in Germany. I mean, look what's happened to the Merkel. The middle of the road. I'm not extreme on anything. I'm just, just trying to manage the economy as best as I can. Manage Europe as best as I can. Manage immigration as best as I can. I'm just going to manage everything. Me, the specialists, the autocrats, not charismatic leaders. Merkel was never charismatic. French haven't had a charismatic president in decades. England, Margaret Thatcher was the last charismatic leader of England. No, these are autocrats. These are bureaucrats. These are central planners. These are little people. And these little people are going away. They're going away. And the one alternative that would save the middle class in France, the one alternative that would not just save them, but give them new lease on life, the one alternative is unacceptable. Fascism is more acceptable. Socialism in its communist form is more acceptable than capitalism. What people won't do to avoid embracing capitalism, what people won't do to avoid embracing rational self-interest, they will adopt anything, which is what we're seeing. Macron in France represents the ultimate centrist, the ultimate nothing, the ultimate boring, just as a long stream of, of, of American presidents have. I mean, was, 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 was Bill Clinton a socialist? No. Was George Bush? No. Was, was Obama? No. They were all little autocrats, little men, little men playing around at president. And the reaction to that is still like Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump is no centrist. He's no nothing. You know my views on Donald Trump. But he's a break from that tradition of Marcones, of trying to have it always, of compromise. Trump is a clear move in a direction that rejects the kind of centrist, compromising, manage, you know, uh, 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 central planning with a great vision of the future. No, Trump says, all of that is garbage. Just let me run things. I know how to do it. I know how to make things right. Now, he's not quite an authoritarian because he's just not smart enough to be an authoritarian. He's just not charismatic enough to be an authoritarian. But that's the trend. That's the direction. As a rejection of the middle of the road, nothingness of politicians of left and right in most countries in the world today. I found it interesting that uh, Max Boot was, 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 you know, really upset about these dem uh, demonstrations. They play right into, into uh, the hands of the Russians, he says. You know, the Russians are trying to create ferment in the West, and it does. He says he's an admirer of Marcon. This is, um, you know, Max Boot, who used to write for the Wall Street Journal, is or was a conservative. Oh, you know, he says, I, rem I remain an admirer of Marcon. Why? And he said, I would love to see an American Marcon, a centrist who can win power in Washington. You know, a centrist. In other words, somebody who doesn't stand for anything, who can juggle everything. And again, a central planner, a, 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 somebody who tells you 
how to run your life, who dictates values to you. That is bankrupt. That attitude is bankrupt. The Trump election has showed us that. What's going on in France is showing us that. And it's happening all over Europe. People are fed up of the center. The center doesn't represent anything. The center is nothingness. It's emptiness. And the consequence of a center, what does the center actually do? We know what a center does, and this plays into Piketty. It plays into the, into the whole agenda of inequality. What does the center do? The center compromises. It compromises. It sells out to the highest bidder. It sells out to the unions, and it sells out to big business, and it sells out to the lobbyists, and it sells out to any pressure group that happens to be in Washington or in Paris that day. The center is the paradise of the pole peddler, in Ayn Rand's terminology. The center is a paradise to the, Le to the Wesley Moochers of the world. Who's going to pay me more? Who's going to give me more power? And the consequence of that is a slowing economy. The, conse the consequence of that is lower wages. The consequence of that is lower productivity. The consequence of that is some people benefit enormously. And who are those some people? Well, they're often bankers and CEOs of large corporations who are the cronies, who are often the cronies. And then again, the middle class and the working class look at that and they say, but wait a minute, you told us capitalism was evil, but how come the representatives of capital are making so much money under your regime? And of course, Macron and these others, they kind of say, well, look, we need some capitalism. The only way to get things going is to leave certain industries to, to let them make money. But it's all for you, you miserable mid middle class. It's all for you, you pathetic working class people. We're doing it for you, but we have to let these guys get rich. Not because they have the right to get rich. Not because they're producing and that gives them the right to get rich. We have to get, allow them to get rich because that's the only way we can take care of you. Because in this balancing app of the center, we have to let the rich get rich in order to tax them so that we can redistribute wealth to you. We have to let the rich get rich so they can create jobs. That's why we cut taxes, even in America. Why do we cut taxes? So corporations create jobs. For whom? For you. Not so the corporations can keep more of their own money and do with it as they please. No. The reason to cut taxes is to create jobs. Everything we do, we do for you. The working class, the middle class, the poor. And the poor go, no, you don't. We're not seeing it. We're not benefiting. Our lives are not better. To hell with the middle. Tell with the center. Tell with compromise. Give us the purity of statism. Give us the purity. If you want central planning, let's go all the way. If we're going to have poor peddlers, we, we hate poor peddlers. I mean, this is Occupy Wall Street. This is, we don't want poor peddlers. Or we want to be the, poor, the pullers. We, the masses. We want somebody to represent us. We want an authoritarian. We want socialism. We want fascism. And that's where we're heading. The masses are fed up with the center. They're fed up with the compromise between socialism and capitalism. They want all in on socialism. They won't admit it. They won't say it like that. But that's the implication. That's the implication. They want, it's not that because they're demonstrating against gasoline taxes, they want all taxes lowered. Not even on themselves. They primarily want to screw the rich. They want less freedom. They want the central planners to finally live up to their promises to take care of them and to do it properly. So what we're seeing is the destruction, and it, it'll, take, it'll take years, maybe decades, to manifest itself fully, but we're seeing the destruction of, of, of European societies as, as they emerged out of World War II, this big compromise, 
We need a little bit of capitalism. We need some capitalism to keep the economies going. But essentially, we are statist and socialist. Essentially, we will redistribute wealth. We will regulate. We will control. We're seeing the bankruptcy of that, where the people now have had it, have fed up with it, and are demanding more. And they're not demanding the right thing. Because they've been told the right thing is the worst of all evils. And this is the thing to remember. The intellectuals tell them over and over and again. The politicians tell them over and over again. The worst thing is freedom. The worst thing is capitalism. That's what we cannot have. So the real solution to the problem is off the table. Just like it is in the United States. There is no capitalist opposition to what's going on in Washington, D.C. Just like the opposite, that, that alternative is off with Brexit. What happened to Brexit turning the U.K. into a free trade haven, this island of freedom? <laughs> That's off the table. That's gone. Because the intellectuals don't support it. And the country is alienated. Alienated. The country is alienated from the elites, from the intellectuals, from the central planners. They promised them stuff, and they're not coming through. So they're turning to alternatives. And the alternatives I'll turn to are socialism and fascism. If you will, Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump, not that Bernie is a socialist in the communist sense, or not that Donald Trump is a fascist in the in a, you know, all-out fascist sense, but they are both movements in that direction each one in his own direction. But they're much more interesting. They can communicate with the regular person much more straightforwardly and directly. They recognize the existing angst, and they blame it on the intellectuals who want compromise, who want the center, who want the mixed economy. So the mixed economy is people are finally fed up with it completely fed up with it. One would have hoped that when people reached the stage of being completely fed up with central planning, with a mixed economy, they would want capitalism, but that's not in the cards because the revolution, the moral revolution that would make that possible is not, has not happened. The moral revolution that Iran made possible has not happened. So people are not ready for capitalism. People are primed for the statism, for the authoritarianism of left and right, of today's left and right. 